Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Tuesday, February the 2nd of 2021. We begin with God's Message for Each Day by Eugene Peterson. God is the center. Psalm 139 verse 16 says, Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. No child is just a child. Each is a creature in whom God intends to do something glorious and great. No one is only a product of the genes contributed by parents. Who we are and will be is compounded with who God is and what he does. Our lives are not puzzles to be figured out. Rather, we come to God who knows us and reveals to us the truth of our lives. The fundamental mistake is to begin with ourselves and not God. God is the center from which all life develops. This evening's prayers come from Ruth Burgess, Bare Feet and Buttercups. Let us pray. God of the still, small voice, you speak to us when we least expect it. We hear your voice in the moments of chaos, clutter, and uncertainty. Jesus, calmer of the storms, your very presence comforts us. We are upheld by your quiet authority. Spirit, counselor, carrier of our pain and celebrations, we gather under your cloak of soft down and sharp flight feathers. We feel the flutterings of new birth. Amen. Our scripture reading this evening is Psalm 118. <clears throat> oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side, I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me in the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Our reading this evening comes from Ruth Chu Simmons, Beholding and Becoming. A lifetime is made up of thousands of ordinary moments in thousands of ordinary days. Sure, we have unforgettable dates of significance in our lives. The day we finished grad school, received a prestigious award, 
led that hostile family member to Christ, welcomed our first child, truly understood the grace of God, or knew our spouse was the one. And then some are not so ordinary days because they mark unforgettable pain, tension, or sadness. The day we said goodbye to a dear friend, resigned from a job, buried a loved one, learned a difficult, previously unknown truth, or finally confronted a wound or wounder. But most days are lived out putting one foot in front of the other while we do the next thing. As Elizabeth Elliot famously encouraged, through the words of an old English poem. Many a questioning, many a fear, many a doubt, hath its quieting here. Moment by moment, let down from heaven, time, opportunity, guidance are given. Fear not tomorrow's child of the king, trust them with Jesus, do the next thing. Do it immediately, do it with prayer. Do it reliantly, casting all care. Do it with reverence, tracing his hand, who placed it before thee with earnest command. Stayed on omnipotence, safe neath his wing. Leave all resultings, do the next thing. How we go about doing the next thing has everything to do with what we believe about what we've been given to do and who gives the next breath in which to do it. I think about the verse we know by heart from youth. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I can't help but see the connection anew. When we believe the giver of every ordinary moment in our every day is the faithful God who is trustworthy for each next step we take in our daily lives, we have reason to rejoice in the gift of another day. Let us rejoice and be glad in it isn't a grit your teeth and obey imperative. It is a response to the preceding truth that this is the day the Lord has made. The Lord is the author of this day you and I get to live. We become joyful and glad about this day, today, as we take our eyes off of what we must do and behold the one who created us to do it in the first place. If God calls this day into existence with us drawing breath by morning, he's faithful to sustain us in it. Gladness is the overflow of a heart that recognizes that our cries and victories are not overlooked by a holy God, neither is our groaning in the toils of every day. Our holy God is already there, going before us in the steps he's planned for us. This day is holy because he makes nothing without purpose and plan. In this, we can truly rejoice. Our prayer is written by Pat Bennett, called God's Place. O God, beyond all boundaries, you cannot be confined by age or moment, form or shape, by word or creed defined. And yet you once in human flesh took root in time and space. Break through the fabric of our lives and meet us in our place. Lord, lead us to the inner place where we may see and own the things that fetter and distort, that break our spirit down. And as we face the dark within, so gift us with your grace, that in the place of death we find our resurrection place. Go with us to the public place to sound your Kairos hour, to overthrow injustices and break oppression's power. Then take us to the place outside to stand with those alone, and by our actions and our words to make our lives their home. So meet us in that place of hope where heaven and earth unite, where doubt and darkness, hate and fear are scattered by your light. Then by your life and power transformed, we will reveal your face. So everything we do and are will always be your place. Amen. May Jesus himself and God our Father, who reached out in love and surprised you with gifts of unending help and confidence, put a fresh heart in you, invigorate your work, and enliven your speech. Amen.
Good night.